Shalom Harim. It is always a pleasure to get to come and speak with you. And uh, if you haven't seen it already, you will see it soon. Uh, it'll be coming out uh, here a little bit later. The uh, more the second part of the video I did with Gary Skogibo. Uh And also, I have what I'm fixing to share with you. I need to thank Gary for sending me an email this morning. He had no idea what he was doing, I don't think. Uh, uh, I know he wanted to bless my heart with a video that he sent me about someone as far as the pronunciation of the, God's divine name. And as I was watching the video, this man is quoting where the, God's divine name was used as a blessing uh, throughout the different parts of Scripture. Uh, and the first one he uses is in the book of Ruth, uh, chapter 2, verse 4. He also used Psalm 91, and uh, I forget where the other one is. Uh, pray for me. I still sinus issue here battling. I, I think it may have something to do with hay fever down in this part of the country. Uh, and I want to also talk to you about some very important issues because of what's going on in the world. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, let me just share with you this little insight that God revealed to my heart. Uh, and then I want to explain to you why I want to share this with you. The hour we're living in, there's many, many reasons behind us. But when I got the video by Brother Gary, I was reading uh, this, and I, and I remember God dealing with my heart on this issue, but not this particular revelation. Chapter 2, verse 4 says, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. Then Boaz said to his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose maiden is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Movite uh, girl who came uh, back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Now, uh, let's just see here. That, and, and there again, the book of Ruth, uh, the chapter of Bet, and the verse Dalet is where I began this. And... I want to just read just a little bit here in Hebrew for my, for my Jewish brethren, especially Rabbi Tovia, because uh, this is a very important revelation, Rabbi, I want to share with you in particular. It says, Vehine Boaz, Bo Mebayet Lechem, from the house of Bethlehem. Veyomu li Katsrim, I'm sorry, my, these glasses are not very strong. Uh, Hashem, or Adonai, because uh, it's a divine name, uh, Imchem, or the Lord be with you. Now, what's so beautiful about this passage, as I have said to you before, and Rabbi, I know you're used to the Christian community telling you that Boaz is a type of uh, Yeshua, Yeshua. Uh, and it, I know that troubles you to hear that, but isn't it interesting that he comes from Bethlehem? He's coming from Bethlehem, showing where Mashiach would come from. And the other ironic issue that I see here, it says, Behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. Remember what he said to the servants of the harvest. Remember the things that Yeshua said to them. Pray the Lord that he will send reapers into the harvest. For it is ready. I mean, everything that Yeshua did when he was here. He, every word that he spoke when we begin to read. Every word that he spoke is laying in the Torah, laying in the Tanakh, Kotevim, Benavim. You know, it's laying in the, in, 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 in the book of Moses, the laws of Moses, laying in the, the, the writings and the prophets. I'm translating because I'm thinking about many times I speak these in Hebrew and I don't translate for the English-speaking people that follow the videos here. Uh, so this is what he's doing here. And, and he, he says it interesting, you know, Hashem be with you. See, 
Let, let, let me back up. Let me, let me read again. Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. What did he say to the apostles? I will not leave you comfortless, but I will return and I will be with you, even in you. Who is he then? The Spirit of Almighty God, the Ruach HaKadosh, was dwelling inside this man Yeshua. What is Ruach HaKadosh? It is Hashem's own Spirit. It is Hashem in spirit form in this world that we live in. And I promise you I'm going to do a video so you'll understand the breakdown of how God became human in this life. I know you try to say God cannot be a man. Nonsense! The word clearly says he wouldn't be. I mean, even the scripture, Rabbi, that you are against, Amma, the young maiden, she's going to conceive, and the child that she's going to conceive is Emmanuel. Emmanuel, our God is with us. So, but it's fascinating though too. The Lord, then he says, and they answered him, the Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee. And he truly, he was blessed. And there's many more things that God has been dealing with me on to go back with the book of Ruth to speak to you on because it is very deep. It is very rich. Um, I, I really, though, I want to say this to my brothers and sisters. I know, with especially in America, with the, with the on the horizon, it, it looks like that the government may default on uh, Thursday if they don't come to an agreement. There is some uh, excitement today that they may come to an agreement after all, but there's still a lot of debate as to whether or not they're going to default on the loan, which may cause an economic collapse. And I know that has many people nervous. Uh, but let me say this here. Even when the economy does collapse, it will eventually go worldwide naturally because they're wanting to set up a one world order and a one world, world currency. The only way to do this is to create a collapse. It's really not, uh, I don't want to get into what the knots, have, knots and have nots are. The point is, we're at the moment in the time where he is going to redeem his bride. Not just a body. Remember, some people write me and they say, you know, Steve, there's no such thing as the bride of Mashiach. There's no such thing as the bride of Christ. The Christians are the body of Christ. Yes, you're part of the body. But Paul said, I espouse you a chaste virgin to Christ, to Mashiach. Now, espouse is to engage. If you are engaged, you are a bride. So, you are a bride. Now, settles that. Now, the point is, though, he's going to take home his bride. And I know there's many of you that love me that, that do not believe in a rapture. I really need to do a series that shows you that Christian that endures to the end and who they really are. No, that's not Bride of Mashiach that endures to the end. Yes, they do go through tribulation. There is a Gentile that goes through tribulation. There are ten virgins, five are wise, five are foolish. Um, but I need to show you that. I know that the Jews, the Jewish people, we go into tribulation as well. Why? But we recognize who he is. I need to do the story of Joseph again to get you to understand the seriousness. You know, we are at the very end of the seven years of plenty. You're at the very end of the time where we should have been gathering together the, the, the gospel and, 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 and to prepare so that Israel, will, during the time of this famine, will be able to, to feast on the word. So we do need your help. We need your help financially. It's the one time you have to be able to be a part of that. And there are other things that you can be doing as well, no doubt. I mean, you may, be, you may want to be part of, of the Aliyah movement and stuff. I believe the majority of the Jews are back in their homeland that are going to be part of the 144,000. But I will tell you one thing. I had someone tell me recently, because we are looking, we're trying to find some property. We don't have the money to even buy the property, but we're looking for property up in either Tennessee or, or, or West Virginia, something like that, to, to try to relocate to. Now, a dear sister sent to me, Brother Steve, no, don't go there. Go to Israel. I'm going to Israel when he tells me I'm supposed to go. 
But let me just share this with you. I'm not going to need a plane. I'm not going to need a plane ticket. And I will not need a passport. As God dealt with Philip, the Lord has always placed this in my heart. I will be able to go by faith. But I need to place my family in a place to where we can continue the ministry. I am concerned about that if the economy does collapse, there may be rioting, there may be civil unrest. I don't want to be in the middle of a town. We know there's going to be earthquakes coming very soon. You know, I want to be part of the Bride of Mashiach. I would love nothing more than to leave this world. But if he has called me for another purpose, and I say he's not revealed this specifically to me. He said things to me. You know, I've had God speak to me audibly many times. I've seen the angel of the Lord on multiple occasions, and everything he's ever told me has always happened. I'll share some of that with you soon. But one of the most important ones that he spoke to me was when he said to me audibly, read Isaiah 61. That is the redemption of Israel. Okay? I've got to be ready for whatever he's called me for. And I don't know what that is. So we're looking for maybe four or five acres or less, three acres, whatever. I mean, I, would, I really don't want the property to be kind of nestled, even if it's only one acre, if it was nestled in the woods, kind of away from everybody, everything, for a place for safety for my family and to where we can set up again and for broadcasting. Um, we'll look for alternative means as well. But if God does call me to go to my own people to speak the gospel to them, then he'll take me there. But until then, we need to do all we can for the Christian people that are here up until the time of the resurrection. And then if it's his will that we stay longer, then I need to be prepared for that hour. So, again, I'm just asking you, anything you can do to help us with that. Also, anything you're doing that is helping the Jewish people now, by all means, support something for their sake. The hour is extremely late, brother, sister. And I say these things, but for those that are Christians, I implore you to, implore you to be in prayer. Get your life in order. It's not too late. If you're watching this video and you feel like that it's too late, it's never too late. Go to your knees. If you don't know Yeshua as your own Savior, go to Him and plead for His, for his blood to cover you, to atone for your sins and a repent of your sins. I don't care what you're doing. He is a deliverer. If you're my Jewish brethren and something is pulling in your heart, maybe Brother Steve is right in what he's saying, then I adjure you, call on Beshem Yeshua HaMashiach. Be Adonai Yeshua Ti. Save me. He is more than able to. And for those of you that have found the favor in His sight, that you know you're going home soon, I'll meet you on that side if I don't meet you beforehand. I know so many people I've heard it said before, when we leave this life, whether it be by death, whether it be by rapture, whatever the case may be, the one regret we will have is that we do enough for Him while we were here. Even I have that regret, and I have it now. I want to spend that time, I'm, I'm physically going back out to move a piano this afternoon because I have to provide for my family as well. I, I'm a firm believer in what Solomon said, the ant that does not work does not eat. I do believe in providing for my family every way I possibly can. But there's 
so many revelations that are in this book here that when you take Marie Chadasha here and you read Hamila Shel Yeshua, you read the words of Jesus, you begin to realize all the beautiful revelations that are hidden in the Torah. Help us, I pray. God bless you. I love you. And, I, you know, the Bible does say, if you ask, you shall receive. But if you don't ask, then how can you expect for people to know? So I don't say this in, in begging. Please understand that. I just know that if I don't ask, you, you won't know. I love you dearly. Email me, IsraelReturns at AOL.com. And if you're wanting to contribute, you can, you can also do that on our website, IsraelReturns.com. There's a donate button at the top left-hand side of the screen. Or you can mail it to us either way at 12537 Gemstone, that's G-E-M-S-T-O-N-E, -E, Court, Fort Myers, Florida, 33918. I love you sincerely. Uh, also, too, those of you that have given, I know there's been times in the past where we would promise to send a, uh, one of the books to you. Uh, and if I've missed you by any chance, please email me and tell me. I, I don't do it intentionally. I get hundreds of emails a day. My wife helps me go through those emails. But if you let us know, I, I want to honor whatever. Because there, there's videos out there where... We had asked in time past if you want to contribute. We'd like to send you a book, things of that nature. I know that that could have been missed. In fact, I was doing so much trying to make sure I sent books each time that finally I had people writing me saying, Brother Steve, we had already ordered your book. We're just trying to help the ministry. Please don't don't keep sending books. We got a bunch of them now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but we, we do, though. If I, and, I, and it's possible I did miss someone, and God knows my heart. I wouldn't want to do that. I love you all. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Stay on top of watching what's going on. I'm going to try to keep you uh, up to date in the next couple of days here as I see things develop. Uh, do One thing I do recommend, if you haven't done it already, make sure you have a little bit of food stocked up, rice, things like that, whatever it is that you happen to like. Um, because I know when we go through an economic collapse, if that's what's fixing to happen, it may not happen now, it may not be till next year, I don't know. It's good to be stocked up, like we say in South Florida, as if you were to have a hurricane. Because mainly the people who do around the stores, I don't want you to be in a situation where you don't have enough to provide for the family. Because if an economic collapse happens to us, it'll still be temporary because they'll still get things restored, but... It's the interim that we're dealing with until that happens over, say, the next two or three weeks if something like that were to take place. What do you do in that time frame? You know, so we like to say be prepared as if a bad hurricane were to hit. You know, have the basics that you need for your family to take care of your family during that time. Uh, because if we get civil unrest, I don't want to see you guys down at a store somewhere trying to buy things when all the people are going nuts down there. So... That's why I encourage you myself. I'm not normally a stockpiler. I don't look at it as far as like that. But I do believe that we should use a little wisdom as well. Never hurts to have something set aside.